Curiosity has been traversing some of the weirdest terrain on the planet, which looks like giant spider webs. So it's fitting that it contains rocks with some of the weirdest shapes, including one that resembles a fossilized sea creature. On this episode of Mars Guy, Curiosity reached the land of giant spider webs back in mid May of this year. Referred to more prosaically as boxwork structures, Curiosity has been slowly making its way across the ridges and hollows to investigate what geologic processes could have formed them. As I noted in episode 216, boxwork structures are common on Earth, but not at the scale of the ones on Mars. In these examples in Chile, the ridges are veins composed of gypsum, a sulfate mineral that forms from the evaporation of briny water. The hollows between are where the softer rock that hosts the gypsum veins erodes more quickly, leaving the veins standing in relief. A version of this story has been emerging as Curiosity investigates the boxwork structures on Mount Sharp, where it's now reached some of the largest examples. The ridges have been repeatedly found to contain what appear to be sulfate veins. It's also noteworthy that the rock that hosts the veins typically shows a reddish hue, which elsewhere on Curiosity's long journey up Mount Sharp comes from the iron oxide stain of hematite. The hollows between the ridges tend to have much different looking rocks, including the one that contains the subject of this episode. Curiosity trundled into this hollow in late July. Here are Mars guys for scale, standing on the floor of the hollow, and the ridge on the far side of it, which appears layered like many of the ridges that form the boxwork structures elsewhere. What bedrock there is on the floor appears very flaky, as seen in this beautiful mass cam mosaic produced by Neville Thompson. The flakes appear to be forming in place as the bedrock erodes, generating little thin platy pieces that also have a strange knobbly appearance. In some places, they appear to have protruding or even branching parts, which is nicely displayed in this scene observed with the Molly camera on the end of the robotic arm. The image was shot at about 4.30 in the afternoon, so the southern hemisphere winter sunlight is coming in low from the right. You can see a mix of both thin, smooth plates and protruding finger-like structures, almost like coral. The piece at the center looks vaguely like some kind of sea urchin, but references to sea creatures are purely descriptive. These rocks are eroded remnants of what likely were sedimentary deposits that became cemented. Some combination of heterogeneity of the cement and the heterogeneity in the size, shape, and composition of the grains that were cemented together ultimately contributed to the unusual shapes of the eroded remnants that we see today. And note that the agents of that erosion are all around. All the tiny, mostly gray particles, sometimes rounded, are likely the globally distributed basaltic sand that's everywhere present on Mars. When driven by occasional gusts of wind and dust devils, sand grains can pick away at rocks like these sculpting them into shapes that look truly bizarre. Another scene in a nearby hollow supports this story. There's a small drift of dark sand that's accumulated here, and hundreds of tiny streamlined ridges of sand that have accumulated behind tiny pebbles that provide shelter from the wind. These are evidence of the action of wind and sand, even in an atmosphere less than 1% the pressure of Earth's atmosphere. And unlike Earth, it's only through the action of wind and sand on just the right rock that an urchin can form on Mars. 